Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to our podcast. Today we're covering the newest Power Rangers series, Dino Fury. And yes, that's the real title. <laughs> now, when an army of powerful aliens called the Sporex <laughs> is unleashed on Earth, a brand new team of rangers is assembled to save the planet from these monsters. Yes! Kaiju! Another one! Good grief! <laughs> And before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, and click notification bell if there's a future podcast and want to pause videos. Yes. And as before, with the last Power Rangers podcast, we are covering this because of recommendation from Playmakers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this one we actually got to watch on Netflix. We understand that it originally aired on Nickelodeon from February through December of 2021. But we were able to watch it at our own pace on Netflix. Yes. And they had about 22 episodes on there. And they started off, of course, with the multi-part uh, opener. With them showing the Rangers, how they get their powers, setting up the villain and the plot of the story. And it ends with a oddly timed holiday episode near fall. <laughs> Which really seemed to be made for fans. Yes. Like, a, definitely a fan episode. Yes. So, when we saw this, the only other series we had seen for Power Rangers would be the RPM series. So, we didn't know what to expect with this one, but now knowing that each one is pretty much its own story, we don't have to worry about being caught up with all the other series or anything. But, we do understand that this particular season, I should say, has a second season. I was trying to, well, I'll just say, Dino Fury has a second season coming out spring of this year, and it's going to be the 29th overall season of the American Power Rangers series. Yes. So, we're not sure if we're going to be watching the second one. We don't know when it's going to come out for sure. We're sure this is probably going to end up airing on Nickelodeon first like mm -hmm. before. Right. So, right now we'll cover this one and then if you love it, then maybe you can let us know in the comments below more about season two. Right. So, now for here, the pretty much the basic setup is that they have the Sporex that can be either used for energy or they can be manifested into walking, talking monsters, which also can grow into giant kaijus. If you defeat them, they turn back into little sporex, um, little things, little sporex balls things that they have in there. <laughs> and basically, you have to capture all of the sporex so that way the earth won't be infested with these monsters or evil energy and they can get it back to another planet. And then they have the uh, villain in here who wants to use a Sporex, and you don't find out why he specifically wants it until, like, a little further in. And I can tell you, I did see that coming because this type of plot has been done before, but uh, we will leave it as a surprise in case you have not seen it ever and you want to see what unfolds. Mm -hmm. Now, it was also adapted from Kishiru Sentai Rusolga. Yes. I'm sure Playmaker can tell us more about that. And probably based on us watching a Japanese version of one of the Power Rangers series, this one has more of an American feel. Mm -hmm. It's probably really different. We're guessing that it's more casual. It's more downplayed versus yes. the Japanese version of the same series. Right. But we can say that there were lots of parts that we really enjoyed mm -hmm. and that there were, for me... I really like the transformation sequence. I thought it was yes. pretty cool with the music and the images and everything. I have to say, that was my favorite part of the series of <laughs> every episode. Yeah, that was, that was a pretty cool effect that they did. And each one has their powers based off of different dinosaurs. And some of them are based off the regular ones like the Tyrannosaur, the Pterosaur, the Triceratops and all that. But... They have others that aren't as, you know, either well-known or commonly used. Like, they even have some aquatic dinosaurs used in the saber-toothed tiger. And they actually do try to mix it up a little bit. So, I do like they didn't just go with the same old um, dinosaurs you see in every single incarnation because they're the easiest to do. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And they had all their powers and their, um, I'll say, call them beast cars. And they come out of the mountain and they form the robot, they're all based around that particular dinosaur. Even the history of how they got the little dinosaur-based powers is just like, what on earth is this? <laughs> An alien worked with the dinosaurs millions of years ago, so then they've spilled Stonehenge for them. It's like, what? Ah! <laughs> so were the dinosaurs more intelligent than we believe? 
I don't know anymore. <laughs> and that was part of the sequence too. But I thought, to me, it was pretty comical when they were burst out of the mountains. But every time you saw them burst out of the mountains, right. like, well, who rebuilt the mountain when they went back? Right. Every time it would be new again, they would burst out. Like, At least if they come out of the water, it make more sense. Man, it's return to the past now. <laughs> So they have a cast, as you mentioned, we have all the colors. We have Russell Curry, who was Zato, the Red Ranger, Kai Moya, Ali Akana, the Blue Ranger, Hunter Dino was Amelia Jones, uh, the Pink Ranger, Tessa Rao is Izzy, along with Chance Paris playing her brother Javi Garcia, the Green and the Black Rangers, respectively. Jordan Fight, Ion, and Josephine Davison is the voice of Solon. Yes! So some of you may be more familiar with them than we are. The only one that we know for sure is Chance Paris because we saw him on the boy band competition yes. on ABC many years ago. Yeah, so it's really crazy to see him here after all this time. Mm -hmm. So, for this cast of characters, I think this time they tried to not have them be so um, goofy because you can watch them the only series and see it's really campy and silly. I think this time around... They're trying not to have a be so campy. It still is, but you can tell they're trying to make it, you know, be taken seriously in terms of a story and an Americanized version of it, which is okay. But there were some points in there, like when they have the woman and her robot assistant do some weird things, or when they have the special effects of lightning and everything, and they're playing sports and all that, and it's always just really, really out there. But I think they're trying to have now the feeling of like a Saturday morning cartoon where it's just something fun and you relax to and watch for the... Oh, I have, of course, watched for the action of uh, mm -hmm. on the weekends too. Mm -hmm. And the fighting sequences that were done, of course, by the Japanese cast, very well choreographed. It was really well done. You like some of the imagination they had and some of the transformations and the weapons they used. One thing that I was real confused about and we had to ask Playmaker is in the second to the last episode, they lost the ability to transform and they lost their costumes and everything. Yeah. But somehow their sword still worked. Yeah. And it's like, well, if you're cut off from the power, how are you still using that? And then the powers come back. Right. And it's like, <laughs> then what was all the drama for? And say, oh, this is going to be the end. Oh, no, it's not. And that's why we have our holiday episode. Yeah. Just the season. <laughs> but now it makes sense why the ending was the way it was. Because we were under the impression there wouldn't be another season. Because on Netflix, it says one season, not season one. So maybe Netflix won't be carrying the second season. Or they haven't made a deal to acquire the rights to do so. Right. So now it makes sense that we know this isn't the end of the story. Because if it was, it would have really ended on a very strange note. Yeah, it really would have. Mm -hmm. And um, before we get to like its last episode of the season, um, there were quite a few interesting routes that the series took this time. Again, they didn't have a lot of campy things. Most of the time, the characters did act a bit like this is not how people act in real life. So they kind of just for TV and it's, you can tell it's just really cheesy with some of the dialogue and the things. And they try to add some more depth, like them having, you know, dealing with their family members, like keeping their um, Power Rangers identity a secret from them. Some go dating, others have personal issues, self-doubt. Uh, you have Red Ranger who, you know, was constantly... You know, thinking about, you know, his planet's probably right. gone, and he's been gone for millions of years now, and everyone's far, possibly far gone. So they did try to add some more depth and some seriousness to it. Not too much where it's like a downer, mm -hmm. but I can appreciate that they wanted to have some more story in the world and just some silly Monster of the Week fight you could take a little more seriously this time. Yes, definitely. They even had some episodes that Delegate mentioned with personal issues. Uh, dating, not making assumptions about different things, mm. and don't rely so much on technology. Yes, and then they had the extra ranger who showed up, also from Red's planet. Yes, and he was, I think he was the, uh, did you say the black ranger? He had a two tone suit. Yeah, so we were kind of confused at that point because he had black and blue well, he wasn't and black some silver. For sure. So he had a Yeah, he had some black color. and blue and silver, so we kind of weren't sure which one he was until they finally said it. And for him, his thing was sort of getting used to Earth and Earth customs and things. But they didn't really go all the way with, you know, 
him mistaking the simplest things as something extraordinary and all that. So they really didn't go with that uh, trope, surprisingly. The most he did is that he did know what who Santa Claus was, and that was about it. And you know, and he liked ice cream. They really kept it simple, which was great. So they, they made sure not to overcomplicate and try to try too hard to make that uh, joke funny. Definitely. Now the last episode as we mentioned was a holiday episode. It really was sweet. Because to me, again, it was like a thank you to the fans. Yes. And to me, this episode is the one they put the most <laughs> work and thought into for this series. Because yes. it was perfect in the sense that it had it didn't have any action. But it built on each team member knowing each other. They were giving gifts. Mm. And... Black Ranger didn't know what to give for so long. Mm -hmm. And so they were going over the gifts that each Ranger had and what they were giving each person. And then with each gift and the person was giving it, they would have a flashback onto how they probably chose it or why they probably chose it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, as you mentioned, some of them at Santa Claus and he was trying to tell him, you know, well, this is the way you pick a gift and it's always like this and so forth. But again, there was so much thought put into it, right. and it was like a little flashback episode, not too much flashback, but it also talked about um, morals and about how you treat others and not taking them for granted and putting thought into the things you do for people. Again, it was the most thoughtful episode of the entire exactly. series. Yeah, it was. It was so. It was so strange to see that, and it was it taking actually a, a breather was really nice. It had a sort of like how MHA has where it's slightly filler, calming down episode where, and it's not like oh this is just made to fill in a slot because they didn't have enough room for episodes or they just want to make something silly. They made something very endearing and it fit with the time of the season when it came out. And uh, Santa Claus exists in this universe, but the whole thing didn't sit around, oh, having to save Christmas or helping Santa. And Santa just is known. I kind of thought he was just like the mall Santa like they always have. But no, he's real. He's there and they're okay with it. They acknowledge it and he just, they just talk to him like he's just an old friend which I guess he is, but it was just like no one is like talking about this and questioning oh Santa's really here that they, they, they he's just real and they accept it and that's pretty much that's pretty much a Santa is just normal and known in this universe <laughs> and it's a great episode and it's a different way of seeing Santa I haven't seen it on anything else we've watched yeah so if you've seen Power Rangers Dino Fury let us know what you think in the comments below are you an original Power Rangers fan was this your first series such as I, it was our first series let us know in the comments if you haven't seen it it's available on Netflix to watch 22 seasons yes give it a watch come back let us know what you think as well yes and be sure to like subscribe click the notification bell to get updates on podcasts and little pause videos yes and visit Playmakers channel he is the resident rascal family Power Rangers expert and lover yes so thank you so much for watching I'm Rascal Entertainment and I'm Mom Entertainment have a tuned day peace